So the camera's gonna be a little shaky again. It's just me filming. So we're gonna be this part four of the video. We're gonna, we're gonna get it running. So first thing you're gonna want to do, get your throttle cable back on. You should see where the nuts been covered. They've been covering each other for a while. So get it back to that roughly close. And then back here to your idle adjuster, turn this in. So you'd want to go like, towards the passenger side, about two turns, maybe three, depending. And then uh, uh, there's no fuel in the carburetor, so that's the case then and you've replaced your fuel lines if you haven't you still might have some fuel in there but go ahead and spray some ether down the carburetor and then you should be ready to fire it up so I'm gonna go ahead and change the position of the camera put it on the tripod and we will get her fired up all right so now the car is running uh, now that it's running, you can idle it down a little bit. It's going to take a second for it to warm up. I haven't been a choke yet, so let it run for about a minute or so. Give it a little bit of throttle. If it'll run, if it'll run on its own, let it run on its own. But it's running smooth. Uh, muffler is cracked, so it is kind of loud. But this is about how we should run. It's silky smooth. Uh, get in and look at the uh, uh, smoke hole. Kind of see roughly. It's kind of hard to see, but about three quarters of the way up the glass side. That's where you want that. You might have to do a little bit of adjustment on the. Uh, fuel inlet screw is right here. Turn up very small turns, otherwise you'll have fuel coming out of it because the carburetor can't keep the fuel in. So you're just going to make really small, small turns. Uh, so this is all the D-back is jabbed up about. This is about how it should run. Uh, that screw in the back that I told you guys to turn in to Two turns. I've already done that off camera. But the screw is back here. Turn that in about two turns, and uh, that should give you a good starting point. So you can look down the carburetor, working as the screw. Fuel filters. You know, got plenty of fuel in it. Then the vacuum leaks. That's one thing you want to check for. Uh, and then this I haven't even messed with yet, and the way it's running I may not. So, pretty simple. I'll idle it down just a little bit more. But that should be about where she runs. Uh, you get a valve adjustment and stuff, and you hear it kind of clacking and whatnot, then you probably need to readjust them. But this is about how smooth they should run. So you haven't done any of these steps. I shouldn't say steps necessarily, but uh, took the precaution, then you might have a you know shaky plug or thing. It might run a little rough, so I would suggest that. But this is what it's like when they run free mode. Nice smooth. All right, so in this part of the video, we're gonna do dress the choke and the air cleaner stuff. So, uh, gonna need just a basic choke kit. So I already have one of those. You can go to any R parts store, pick one up. And then you're gonna need to figure out where you want to run your choke cable. So on the 84, 85, I've noticed in the wagons, they have this grommet right here. My, 80, my SI doesn't have it, so I don't know if it has something to do with the kind of... I think that would have been for the automatic kickdown if it was an auto car, but I'm not 100% sure. So, that's the hole I'm going to use, and then I'll probably actually just end up routing it 
however I want to to make this work. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the cable. I'll show you guys that and then we'll get to installing it. So like I said, I just picked up a generic uh, choke kit. Here's all the accessories and you got the cable. So they, I think it was like 10, 12 bucks. They have them cheaper, they have more expensive. Just depends what you wanna do. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that fed through the firewall there. Um, I do have grommets, so this will be a nice install and then figure out how we wanna mount it or where to mount it for that matter. So this will be the bracket I'm gonna use. It's got three holes in it. Uh, I did have a little piece here that I cut off, but uh, I'm actually gonna put that probably right about there, easy reach, kinda out of the way. Um, yeah, uh, if you're not fond of drilling a hole in your dash or interior, now the hatch, stuff's gonna be a little bit different. The CRX is gonna be a little bit different, but that's where I'm putting it because that's where it best fits. Um, with cable, uh, pull, you don't want to have the cable too binded, things of that nature. So I'm going to go ahead and get this mounted up. I'm just going to use some three uh, pan head type screws, uh, get that mounted into place, and then we'll be good on the interior side, and we'll go out there and deal with on the carburation side where the fun starts. All right, now we got it mounted up inside the car. So you can see, looks pretty good. Hardly even notice it. I'm sure if I painted it black, it'd look even better. So now we're gonna take our box of goodies. Come over here to the car. So what we're gonna need out of here is This bracket, this bracket, and this barrel nut, I guess is what you want to call it. So we're going to need those three parts to do what we need to do. So I'm going to go ahead and get this uh, set up and then I'll show you guys what I did. So I cut some of the, shortened up some of the choke. As you can see, there's the cable kind of want to get it close to about how long you're going to want it and then uh, do some fine tuning from there uh, cut it to where you still have plenty of extra of the pull cord um, I just stretched it out kind of like a like a slinky and then cut it and then this is what I have left extra so what I'm gonna do now is final tune it and then uh, we should be done so as you can see, I got the barrel nut with the wire in there and the screw. This is kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, so just take your time. I actually have to take off the top of the lid and feed it through and then get the wire through and then get the nut through. It's kind of a pain, but it's doable. So then kind of pull that screws a little tight. pull through and then <clears throat> sorry I got hair in my mouth unloosen this back up gonna get that slid in there and then tighten this back down like I said it's gonna take some fine fine tuning to get this perfect so that's kind of the basic idea I'm gonna go ahead and get this fine tuned a little bit more and then I'll show you how it's working uh, properly. Cause it's just me filming again today, unfortunately. All right. All right, so now we're gonna test out the choke. So that, as you can see, sorry about the bad lighting. So it's fully in, which means when we come out here, the choke is completely open. Um, so I took another bolt from the kit to make this clamp even tighter. And then I just used one of these pins to stop it from moving. As you can see, it's all mounted up and adjusted properly. So that's all the way in, so it's completely open. So 
we come in here, pull it out, and we are completely closed, and nothing moves. So it's fairly simple. Just take your time. You will get frustrated, but so that's that for the choke aspect of that. Uh, just tighten up all your nuts and bolts, recheck everything, and you're good. So now we're gonna go ahead and move on to the air cleaner. All right, now so we're gonna address the air cleaner aspect of this. So it's pretty stock looking air cleaner. So what I've done is taken out the piece of plastic that goes right here. It's like a, I guess we wanna call it a restrictor. So I took that out, helped it free some airflow. Over here is like the oil bath the crankers breather uh, replace that when you do it these holes you kind of see right there that's just drains in case water gets in there and then here with some little air bleeds for a vacuum port that uh, I took out and I'm gonna weld these shut but you can leave all that stuff in there if you don't have the access to a welder like I do As you can see just underneath and then those two I'm just gonna plug off with some caps because I'm not needed anymore, and then uh, it'll be good to put this back together. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these welded up and uh, show you what we got going on. So now that you got your mesh screen back on with your two 10 millimeter bolts, uh, put the bolt in there for the valve. That also goes to the valve cover. Uh, I'm just using a paper filter. We'll go ahead and throw the uh, stock lid back on it has kind of its own little slots uh, slide into over here you can see the way the box and that is kind of cut the same so we'll go ahead and clamp her down it's nice and tight and then so Air lid's on now, and I'll go ahead and grab the intake tube. So I found it, it was just hiding. So now we just stick it over there. Uh, which I actually, I like about these, it has a little uh, mounting tab over here in the corner that a bolt, uh, a bolt goes into. Pull the battery forward, slide that over there, and this actually goes around Sorry, I tried to do this one hand again. It's not easy. That actually goes right there to hold the fuel line, and ta-da. Your fresh air is hooked up. Uh, you can hook these back up. You don't necessarily have to because this doesn't really do us any good anymore seeing that this is like a air intake temp thing, but we'll plug it back in for the look aspect of it. It's kind of hard to do with one hand. I'll plug that in later. So, uh, that's... That's a DVAC for you. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Uh, like I said, you'll have to do a still, potentially have to do some fine tuning with the carburetor. Uh, but other than that. So now I got the air cleaner assembly and all this stuff on. Uh, running smooth. I mean, that's how simple the DVAC is. It's not terribly hard. Like I said, there's a few kinks you gotta work out here and there, but it's nothing major. Um, so now at this point, you are done. Just a little bit of fine tuning, like I've said. So, hope this helps everybody. I still gotta put the oil bath on, so don't worry about that. So I hope this helps everybody. Uh, go ahead and comment, like, subscribe, you know. Dig into it, and if you got any questions, just hit me up and I'll be glad to answer those.